Yeah, yeah, I think he's going to zoom on via Zoom. It sounded like though too. Let me go back to my office. I've got I've got uh, some handouts for you, and uh, nobody is recording, but nobody is on. I don't think right now. So. Well, you need a. I can start. I can pause the recording, sir. So let me pause. About it a little, about how want to hold, whether it's students, teachers, schools, individual schools or districts, um, hold them necessarily accountable for the results, considering there are a lot of different factors that are going to go into those tests. You know, getting enough students there. You know, in a current situation, whether some students are virtual and in person. And I think a lot of people just want to do the test to see where everyone's at. And I think that goes back to the BEP review committee recommendations of, you know, increased funding for RTI and counselors and school nurses. When those students come back and we start getting a better idea of where they're at academically, we have we may have more students in tier two and tier three um, for RTI that are going to be you're going to require they're going to require additional intervention that they didn't have before to get them back to where they need to be. So that's why it's important to, um, I think that's one of the reasons those, that priority was on there because those, that setting of RTI is where those kids get the individual instruction based on their area where they need help the most. And um, so I think that's, that's another recommendation that's going to play a big part over the next few years because it's going to be, it's not going to be an immediate change to get students back to where they are. It's going to take time. Um, and, and resources to do so. So those are two big things that I just wanted to touch base on that I think are, that are really, really important in the upcoming year. Ben, ben are you hearing a lot about summer school? Uh, I know from the department and maybe from legislators too, about uh, funding, funding LEAs for summer school next, next summer. I think there's a lot of conversations going on. I think that's one of them about not, maybe not necessarily that aspect of it, that's an example or a possible outcome. I think everyone knows on the same page of something has to be done. Using kind of the same school model, there's not enough, there's not enough hours in the day, I think, to account for the quarter of the year students lost last year and then the situations they're facing this year. There's just not enough time. Plus, when they come back, you guys are expected to get them where they should be this year. So you're you're taking a year and a half almost and trying to put it into one year and there's just not enough hours in the day. So I think that that could be possibly be a proposal of summer school or um, some kind of program, maybe similar to Read to Be Ready that we had several years ago, just something additional for those students that need help the most. That is, that is a big that is a big thing, Ben. Uh, I mean, literally, about how far our students, uh, you know, are trying to catch up, and and then those, you know, like we're on, uh, you know, we're distance learning right now, and just was uh, just text a moment ago that Rutherford County's gone distance learning, Wilson County's already distance learning, and all around us are distance learning. I was on with the Coffee County uh, director earlier today, uh, and they're looking at doing distance learning if they can. You know, right now his staff is, is okay, but they're having, they're starting to have staffing issues. So that's become a big, big thing right now about, you know, more and more distance learning. And then it depends on who you talk to in regard to January, what we're going to find when we come back from Christmas. It's uh, um, just uh, really, some really struggling times here uh, for, uh, for education period across the, across the board, across the state too. I think you bring up a good example with staffing and I've talked to some districts. It's not necessarily where the students have um, been in contact, but maybe the, the teacher has and they can't find someone else to, to come into the classroom. They're just not available. You only have so many, so many people that can do that. And so many people that are willing to do something like that. I mean, um, bless everyone who I have four kids and I couldn't imagine a classroom room of six-year-olds all day that uh that'd be something else so our teachers right now are doing 
an extraordinary job in the current times and dealing with things that are we've just never even thought of before. Hey ben, this is Wade. Uh, is, any, is any system that you've heard talked about extending the school year out a little bit, a few weeks at the end of this year, this coming year? Making Some nice. districts, districts are looking at the different options that are available. I mean, that is an option. The minimum requirement in law is the minimum of 180 school days. So there's nothing to prevent you from going longer than that. Um, unfortunately, in every situation like that, it's it's a money issue. It's having enough money to pay the teachers. Um, More stress on them. And the, the support staff, You, if you're gonna extend the school day or extend the school year, excuse me, you're gonna run buses. So having the funds to, to account for all that, to address those different issues. And that's why I think if, if there is some kind of legislation or something regarding summer school or some type of summer program, funding is gonna be critical for that. Because right now, you know, our funding doesn't account for something like that to take place. That's why when you had those programs in the past, like the Read to Be Ready, there was additional funding provided by the state and federal government um, that those programs use to support uh, their operations. So I think it's gonna be critical that funding um, comes down along with any, any requirement or option for summer school. So that, that may play into the same thing. And that's not necessarily extending it, but the, the, the trouble that I, I see with that too is getting our, you know, our, our faculty, our, our, you know, teachers are very, very tired at this point. I mean, they have been doing things we'd never thought before, you know, and, and they're really, really, there's fatigue going on within our, within not only our district, but across the state again. And uh, getting people that would, won't like to do summer school would be, would be a challenge, I think, uh, I think too, down that pipe. Yeah, that that may certainly be a challenge having some people willing to to take on that extra responsibility. Um, certainly. Okay. All right, Ben. Anything else you would like to uh, follow following Miss Lillian's uh, presentation? There. Uh, uh, go ahead, Ben. With anything else you have, particularly on BEP issues and and things of that nature coming down from uh, TSBA. We just sent our policy reviews. I think we had about ten or fifteen policies that we just reviewed that we sent to Jennifer. So those, uh, those have been updated according to an email I got earlier from her. So I appreciate the quick turnaround. Yeah, no problem. We are in the, our time period for our annual audit. One of the things we do is we go through every school board's policy manual and look at the policies that are required by law to make sure you have updated policies. There's about 80 of those policies that you have to have. And we wanna make sure that those policies are compliant, you know, things change on a regular basis, whether it's state law, whether the state board changes policies or rules or the federal government changes um, regulations. So it's just important, we think, to have that annual review to let you guys know, hey, here's some recommended things you can do. Um, as far as the BEP goes, we are, you know, session starts the second Tuesday in January. So it's right around the corner, you know, after Christmas, it's, it's coming, it's coming up. So I think a lot of conversations will be happening about funding and, and how that can occur. I know the state is continually looking at the budget numbers and revenue numbers to see what options are there. And I think the key is to continuously engage your legislators. I know they want to hear from you and you are dealing with the, the day to day issues. So providing them with input to let them know what you need is is key and uh we'll be talking with uh, of course i do usually a weekly thing with mr Pody, mr Pody and rippers and boy so they are very very good about communication with us here in our, our, our district but one of the you know things too we're uh, doing upper cumberland uh we have a meet with them at 9 30 on thursday where we're going to be uh, all, all of the upper cumberland directors will be getting together with multiple ones across the Upper Cumberland. So that's pretty good. And uh, like I say, Ripson Boyd uh, and uh, uh, 
uh, State Senator Pody are very, very good about listening and taking our, our, our things to, uh, to the legislature, taking whatever we, we desire. You know, I was in communication with them nearly on a, on a really a daily basis during some of those days in the General Assembly because they wanted, they wanted our, our opinion. And I think that uh, we've got a great relationship there and we want to continue that. They are both very engaged with their constituents in the, the district or the school districts in their district. Um, they're very engaged and I know they reach out to you all on a regular basis and, and want that feedback. So I think you are certainly, they are certainly more than willing to help. And it's great to know that they're meeting with you all on a regular basis. I know we've always had great interaction with them. So I think that's, that's fantastic. Okay, uh, let's go around the around the horn here uh, with the board, Mr. Chairman. Y'all, you you got him here, so. <laughs> well, the the ladies, you're going to see them on in, in January uh, seven seven and eight, so you'll see the ladies on the board uh, at that orientation. So thank you for expanding that uh, to get uh, more board members there at, uh, at the orientation meeting then. Absolutely, we're, we're working hard with um, where we're having the location of the meeting to make sure we're meeting all social distance requirements and the different CDC guidelines. So it's certainly, uh, we were glad we were able to, to take all those guidelines and all the requirements and, and put them in place to where we could still have an orientation as opposed to uh, two days of Zoom meetings, I'm sure. <laughs> they hopefully they'll appreciate the the in-person versus the two days of zoom i already do i'm very thankful <laughs> <laughs> ben that was a very very good meeting i want to give you guys kudos for the way you put it on and the information we received it was very informative kept us engaged it was very well done well thank you we certainly appreciate that and i'll pass it along to uh tammy and jennifer and emily the other presenters as well I didn't get the full effect of the convention, though, Ben. You know, all the vendors and all the hoopla. And yeah, we had to get, we had to cancel effect. convention this year. <laughs> Keeping our fingers crossed that things are going to get back to normal soon. I think we're we're all hoping that. All right. Any additional questions for Mr. Torres? Okay, and that will conclude our broadcast. And we appreciate everybody joining us tonight. And uh, thank you, uh, thank okay. you, Ben. I sent Ben a couple, right, Ben? I sent you a couple of topics, short, just some short answers to it. You, you remember those? Oh yes. Uh, one one question uh, came up. Sorry about that. One question right. came up about transportation and how transportation works in the BEP. So, if you look in the BEP. Uh, handbook for computation it's actually on page 54 i believe but the way it looks it looks at a three-year average of transportation costs so it looks at the miles um transported the number of students and it's a ratio of that year to to the three-year average so when you look at transportation funding it's not necessarily in a vacuum of that specific year it's over a time period and they use a multiple regression formula to kind of project out what you would need for that year. So when you, you look at your BEP sheets that you get from the department, they'll have a overall number in there total. And I think I looked at the uh, numbers for Cannon County. I wanna say transportation uh, with all the allocations was right around 811. Of course, that includes both the state and the local. So that doesn't include, so because of that, you got to apply the fiscal capacity formula as well. So that doesn't mean 811. It's just once you apply the fiscal capacity, the state will spit out a number basically of what you're going to get for that. So the three year rolling average for transportation. And then one other question um, rezoning. So certainly, Rezoning is always a big issue on a lot of districts um, when they start to talk about that. And it has, there's positives and negatives to it. Obviously the negatives are whether you're expanding and opening new schools or you're contracting and closing schools. Um, 
your funding is going to be affected to an extent with rezoning because of the way the BEP works for the most part it doesn't look at individual schools it looks at the overall number of students you have in the district only in individual only in certain specific circumstances does it take into individual schools into account so as you if you let's say you rezone to consolidate you could have savings there um, let's say you don't consolidate and you keep the same number of schools and you move students around depending on how you move them around uh, you could get a situation where you do get you know more money for a principal for instance you go from maybe a half a principal to a full principal but on the flip side of that if you move students around you have to keep in mind student teacher ratios so you could move a certain amount of students in the grade band to where you're required to have an additional teacher in one area at a, at a different school but you don't reduce your teaching numbers at the old school so in that case you may have to hire an additional teacher that offsets any additional money you get for that principal so i always describe the bep there's 47 components and when you pull one lever you're going to pull 46 other levers and being able to project that out and understand that just because this area may have an improvement you may see a loss in another area a lot of times you talk it's it's a pie and the pie is as big as as big as it is and when you start to shift things around that doesn't necessarily mean the pie gets any bigger you're just reallocating the size um and where you divvy that money up so certainly when you're thinking about or looking at rezoning or any of those issues take the whole into account of not just the individual areas that you want to seek improvement in but what effect will it have in other areas so that's kind of that would be my recommendation there of looking at whole looking at the BP and your funding holistically when you start to have those conversations. And I will tell you, the Department of Ed is great. Marianne Dursky at the department, she always takes the time to answer questions, um, emails, phone calls, and to talk through different issues. I think she is a fantastic resource for school districts. So if you all have any questions or just want to, you know, run some things by her to see exactly how it will work, she is certainly the guru in that area and she is a fantastic resource. Thank you, Ben. Okay, any other board members? Mr. Chairman? I don't have anything. All right, folks, we appreciate you listening in tonight for this informative session. And our, our next uh, our Board of Education meeting will be uh, in January. And we'll give everybody a Christmas break and we stay, everybody stay safe. And then uh, we'll look at our next meeting. Uh, we can't get a Board of Education workshop. will be on January the 11th. And uh, that will be coming up. And then our next uh, board meeting will be on January the 14th is our next board meeting. So thank you, Ms. Lillian, and also thank you, Ben, uh, for the meeting tonight. All right, any other things for the close? Thank you, Ben and Lillian. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. <laughs>